Welcome to the GTN Show. This past week was a big race week. Yes, this weekend Lucy Charles Barkley couldn't race due to visa issues, but then she did race yeah. at the very last minute. And the Challenge Championship was won on a single speed bike. Yep, Cam Worth and Sam Laidlow also went head to head on the bike out in Lanzarote. Only on the bike. And we have the race schedule of all race schedules to discuss, courtesy of none other than Christian Blumenfeld. Okay, kicking off with React things we spotted on social media this past week. There's been quite a lot of stuff, actually. I mean, obviously, there was loads of racing, so lots of drama around that with some of the athletes. But this one caught my eye, actually. And this is coming off of the Ibiza race uh, the other week, which obviously you were at yourself, James, where Race Ranger was present when in the pro fields. And actually, we have a video over on our channel, which is kind of doing a bit of a behind the scenes of Race Ranger in action with the pro athletes. But this was really cool. So one of those athletes, Christopher Visti Krai, 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 Krai yeah. uh, from Denmark, actually contacted Race Ranger prior to the World Triathlon Long Distance Champs and asked, could he get the dimensions of the device so that he could actually 3D print or design and 3D print his own bracket and attachment to go on the specialized Shiv Tri uh, above that big sort of hydration system that comes off the back because um, he wanted to make it nice and aero and neat. It's, it's neat, isn't it? It's pretty neat. And it's interesting because on our Race Ranger video, there's been quite a few comments about sticking this big chunky thing on both your aero fork and also out behind your saddle uh, on these super aerodynamic bikes. And then you've got to put this hockey puck size thing on there. And obviously, Race Ranger is in process, so yeah. it's going to get smaller and more refined and be able to hide it in various places. But right now, it's pretty large and chunky. And this guy clearly wanted his aerodynamics not to be compromised, so he 3D printed a bracket for it, which is... Pretty cool. And Pretty to be fair, I mean, I imagine that would be quite a complicated bike to attach it to anyway. I mean, you're going to need some big cable ties or a couple of cable ties to get around yeah. that hydration <laughs> system off the back. <laughs> so True. that's cool. Yeah. Um, also, we saw a lot of drama with Lucy Charles Barkley mm, this yeah. past week or so because she was hoping to race this weekend, but she has some visa issues. Yeah, we actually said in last week's show, we were doing the preview of the race, and we said, ah, unfortunately, Lucy Charles Barkley won't be going up against Laura Phillip in Challenge Kreitschgau, uh, in 70.3 Kreitschgau, because she's got visa issues, she's run out of days. It turned out she did have two days left on her visa, and she made the most of those, <laughs> by flying in uh, for just 36 hours or 33 hours to do the race and fly back home again. Uh, she is now completely out of days to go into the Schengen area. Uh, I'm not sure what that means for her challenge Roth. She, I think she must be hoping to get a new visa uh, for that, but she made the most of those last I mean, she's days, got, did she? you know, a handful of hours left, apparently, so uh, yeah, I think mm, you well, can't even get the Ironman no. in that time. <laughs> I think if you're there for any fraction of a day, it counts as a whole day, so uh, I think she's done now. Uh, nice. Um, also saw Alistair Brownlee and Ruth Assel um, getting stuck into some more off-road racing, uh, this time with some gravel. It's the Gralock gravel event up in Scotland, and it had quite a high calibre of athletes racing, actually, also some other triathletes in there. Um, but in particular, Alistair Brownlee was right up the front, as we'd expect from him. Unfortunately, he didn't take the win. Not entirely sure where he finished. We're pretty sure he was in the top 10 because he seemed yeah, to be yeah. in a breakaway. Um, but it was Connor Swift from the Ineos Grenadiers that took the win which shows just the calibre of athletes that were turning up there. Uh, Ruth Assel, unfortunately, I think she had a couple of crashes. Yeah, she said it was 100% her own fault and uh, her <laughs> skills let her down and maybe a bit of bad luck, but uh, yeah, they both sound like they enjoyed it. I think Alistair will be fully focused now. It's two weeks until uh, Ironman Hamburg, European champs, where he's hoping to stamp that ticket for the Ironman World Champs in Nice later this year. So uh, yeah, fingers crossed for that. Hopefully he can put away his gravel bike and his mountain bike for a few weeks and focus on the on the fast bike. Uh, there was also the night of the 10K PB, which definitely lived up to its name, didn't it? There were some fast times. Yes, yeah, so this just takes place each year at Hampstead Heath. This year, On Running jumped on board. It's now sort of called the On Running Track Night. Um, and yeah, I mean, this just, again, attracts such a caliber of athlete. And it's um, it's fast racing all night long and seems like such a good atmosphere. Yet to go myself, but everyone sort of can have fun drinking beer around it and cheering these 
top level athletes on. Yeah, on the women's side, uh, Mizan Alem Aden actually ran a PB, as you would hope, on an out of the 10K PBs. Uh, and in fact, the 11th all time time for a 10K, uh, she did 29.59.03 for that 10,000 meters, which is flying. And then on the men's side, it was Paul Chilimo that also posted a PB of 27.12.73 to go eighth on the US 10,000 meter all-time list. Yeah, unfortunately missed the world qualifying standard there by two oh. seconds. Ouch. Yikes. Yeah, brutal. Uh, also, we saw this at the championship, uh, the challenge championship out in Samarin. Chris Nikic, who we're all familiar with, uh, doing Ironman with Down syndrome, uh, has done his first race without a guide. He did the whole challenge championship without a guide this weekend. So hats off to him. That is very impressive. It's the first time he's done a race without a guide and he did a championship race yeah, impressive on top very good and yeah. um, this also was brought to my attention over the weekend ross cook uh, also known as hardest geezer on instagram <laughs> um and uh, well yeah fair play i think he probably is because he's currently trying to run the length of africa and he's currently on day 30 or he's probably beyond that now but yeah that's some tough Going. I assume he's running south to north because he's currently in Namibia yes. heading towards Vintuk. Uh, I don't think he's come from the north down to Vintuk. He's clearly run up through South Africa from Cape Town uh, and he's yeah, running through the desert day after day after day after day. Hardest geezer indeed. <laughs> that is mind blowing. Yeah, uh, also, this one uh, caught our eye. It's um, quite funny. Uh, from the Vancouver Marathon, um, Alex Reed wore 81 t shirts weighing roughly 42 pounds whilst completing the Vancouver Marathon on Sunday. Uh, six hours, 22 minutes, an attempt to break the current Guinness World Record. Um, but unfortunately, I think he came a little short on that. But I feel a GTN challenge going <laughs> on. Yeah, well, should, we go rate, should we go rate the GTN shop and get all their sizes and <laughs> see how far we, how many t-shirts we go? I mean, the first challenge is how many t-shirts can you get on well, yeah, first? Exactly. And, then, and then whether you can actually run with those on. Yeah. Uh, and then a uh, bit of news from the cycling world linked to triathlon. Tadej Pagacha has broken his wrist four weeks ago, as we know. Uh, it looks like he's started a bit of running. We've always said, as a triathlete, you get injured in one sport, you can do other sports. That's the advantage of, of triathlon. Uh, and he has, uh, yeah, he's hurt his wrist and looks like he's doing some stair running, trying to, get, trying to get fit and strong again. And another pro cyclist also looks like they're uh, warming up for triathlon. Uh, this was a bit more of a joke of how wet their, their bike race was. Uh, doing a bit of breaststroke there. Lawrence Rex uh, breaststroke whilst on the bike, trying to swim through the rain. Yeah, uh, also spotted Andreas Salvesberg at Crashgow having some almighty mechanical issues. Yeah, a I few mean, mechanical fair, issues. Fair play to him for keep, get, keeping going during the race because he basically had to jump off numerous times on the bike to change gear because his gears just were not playing. Um, and um, basically pressing the Shrami tap button to get it to shift and then eventually figured out that he could probably kind of do it with his foot on the go. So apparently he could he could blip it down with his foot because that's one blip, but you have to blip it twice, twice. a double tap yeah. to get it back up, and he couldn't manage to do that with his foot. That was beyond his skill level. So he had to hop off to <laughs> to change gears. Stay tuned because I mean this is all quite impressive when you see he, the results. He did make the most. Yeah. Also, another mechanical this past weekend, and we already mentioned her, Lucy Charles Barkley. Uh, she was a bit vague about what exactly went wrong. Um, maybe she's sponsored by her uh, her group set provider and doesn't want to say what went wrong, uh, but something went wrong on her bike. She lost a few minutes, but again, much like Andrea Salvesberg, uh, did very really well to overcome it and not let it ruin her day. And that's not all. Another one that also had a mechanical issue, Indy Lee out in the Challenge Championship in Shamarin, and um, she also went on to have a very impressive performance in one gear. Yeah, single speed the whole way. And yeah, she definitely overcame her mechanical issues there. All that news coming up in the race news a little bit later on, but a lot of mechanical issues and it you know, doesn't seem to really be slowing many people down. Impressive. Okay, now it's time for Try News. And we're discussing this week a pretty crazy race schedule that has been revealed. Uh, Christian Blumenfeld revealed this on the How They Train podcast with Jack Kelly, uh, where he spoke about what his race plans are for later this season. And it's got Mark and I talking about how crammed the schedule is. So just have a listen to this. Christian Blumenfeld is planning, uh, Christian Blumenfeld, who is obviously a previous Ironman world champion and also 
PTO uh, European Open second runner-up just a few weeks ago, and also going for Ironman, you, you know, and now he's trying to qualify for Paris. So this is what he's planning to do. He's trying to do the Paris test event, which is essentially a dry run for the Paris Olympics next year. It's a Standard distance, obviously, Olympic distance, draft legal. It is the Paris test event. It's a pretty major event on WTCS calendar for this year. Obviously, it's only a test for next year's event. And then that's on Friday the 18th of August. On Sunday the 20th of August is the PTO Asian Open. So he's got to get from Paris to the PTO Asian Open, which is in Singapore in 36 hours. Mm -hmm. And then a week later, or less than a week later, he's coming all the way back to Lati in Finland to do the 70.3 World Championships. That is three major events at different distances in eight days, nine days. Yep. It well, is nuts. I mean, first of all, let's just figure these logistics out because obviously the big one is how on earth do you get from Paris to Singapore in time for that event? Well, apparently there is a flight at 10 to 11 from Paris on Friday. So he'll do the event, quickly get that bike packed up, get on that flight. He'll be on his way to Singapore by 11 p.m. and then he'll be fl uh, landing in Singapore at 6 p.m. on the Saturday. That gives him until around three o'clock the next afternoon until race start. Yep. I mean, he won't actually have to take that bike because they use completely true, different bikes. True, that is so, very true. So yeah, I think so. someone will probably take his, his time trial bike with, to, with them before it'll be there waiting for him. But the women will already have been racing, or actually be racing when he lands in Singapore on that Saturday afternoon. Uh, the men racing 24 hours later on Sunday afternoon. Uh, but then it's less than a week before the 70.3 World Champs in Lati, Finland, and he's got to fly all the way back across all those time zones to do that one. Uh, I mean, logistics aside... We've got a few things here. Most athletes just wouldn't be able to recover. I mean, you do the test event, albeit, okay, it's a test event. He's not necessarily going to win, but knowing Christian, he probably will. Um, it's, there, it's an opportunity to sort of go through the motions, figure the event out ahead of the following year. But you're tired, trying to travel to race pretty much the next day, let's face it, um, a long distance event with that fatigue in you. And to add to that, jet lag. Yeah. I mean, I don't think it's even going to be there long enough to get jet lag. But <laughs> it's it is a, it is not, it's not easy getting off a flight. I mean, if you think about how you feel after a long distance flight, uh, it doesn't matter what you're doing. You feel lousy for a while after getting off that flight. He's going to have to race. Uh, and then he's going to get back on that flight and fly all the way back again to do another race. And you can't help but thinking, I mean, I know it's the PTO championship and it's, uh, it's $100,000. But is it really worth it? Should he not just do the test event and then just go a few hours north to Lati in Finland and spend a weekend ready for that 70.3 world champs and claim a world title? And you might be sabotaging both of those events. Well, I'm, I'm hoping we're going to eat our words there and I'm sure Chris, you will make darn well sure well, that if we anyone, If anyone can, <laughs> yeah. But it did get us thinking about what is happening in the world of triathlon at the moment because it is quite interesting. Uh, we've got the PTO obviously come into the, into the fray with a whole bunch of these major events with major prize money that are very tempting for pros and you can't, it's hard to say no if you've got an invite to one of these major events. Uh, but then there's also 70.3 World Champs, there's also the Ironman World Champs which has, particularly for the men this year, moved to very close to the 70.3 World Champs. I mean two weeks after that 70.3 World Champs in Lati, Finland, you now have the Ironman World Champs in Nice. Uh, and Christian actually, he was, that question was put to him. And he said, if he had another couple of weeks after the 70.3 World Champs, maybe he could do the Ironman World Champs also, but two weeks is too quick a turnaround. I mean, apparently there is a limit somewhere for Christian <laughs> <laughs> and that might be it. But uh, yeah, it, we, we're just gonna run through quickly what this season looks like. And I think maybe it's calling for a bit of organization of the season for PTO Ironman Challenge, you know, WTCS, because it's yeah. getting a bit hectic. I mean, just coming up in the imminent future, so we have got uh, Ironman Hamburg, which is the Men's European Champs coming up on the 4th of June. Then we've got Challenge Ross on the 24th of June. Ironman Frankfurt, which is the Women's European Champs on the 2nd of July. And then we have the PTO US Open for 5th of August. I mean, August is 
packed. Yeah, unbelievable. Yeah. yeah, and then the 6th of August, which is the same weekend, the 70.3 European Championships. On the 18th of August, as we said, the Olympic Test Event, uh, which is not really long course, but it is relevant. Uh, the 20th of August, the PTO Asian Open, uh, all the way over in Singapore. The 27th of August, a week later, 70.3 World Champs. And then the 10th of Sem- September, the Ironman World Champs in Nice. And then obviously a month later, the Women's Ironman World Champs out in Kona. Uh, and it really is squeezing the pros as far as traveling goes, as far as the scheduling goes, as far as picking your races, because it's not just these races. We've left out all of the qualifying races for these. Yeah. You have to qualify for Ironman World Champs. You have to qualify for 70.3 World Champs, which means you have to do other events also on top of potentially these. It's really, I mean, it's great that there's this many races and that they've all got prize money and that there's all these races for athletes to do. But as spectators, what we really want to see is all the best athletes going head to head in the biggest races. And when there's this many races being squeezed into August, September, you literally can't have that. I mean, it's we, just not possible. We haven't even discussed short distance either. You've got no. WTCS events, Super League, Arena Games, World Triathlon, Multisport. It's mental. And as, as James says, as a spectator, where do we look? What is the focus in other sports, like tennis, for instance? You've got the Grand Slams. You know exactly where all the athletes are going to be and where to look. And yeah. now it's just diluted and what do the athletes do are they going after money are they going after prestige are they they yeah, yeah. it's really tough time. but it's a good problem for the sport of triathlon mm-hmm. to have i think i think we won't look a gift of in the mouth too much it is the right kind of problem for triathlon but i think it does call for all of these heads of these major organizations to get together and start figuring out a proper professional season that we as fans can get behind instead of having someone like christian blumenfeld who we want to see perform at his best being stretched to possibly breaking point by doing three races in nine days. Well, we'll see. Uh, Well, moving on, and um, Sean Conway has been continuing with his almighty effort. He's on day 43 at the moment. Uh, We'll be on day 45, actually, as you're watching this, uh, with his Ironman every day for 102 days. Yeah, trying to break that record of the Iron Cowboy of 101 Ironmans in 101 days. Uh, We're going to head out there and go for a are. We are hoping. We've been in touch with Sean and his team, and we're hoping to meet up with him at some point and hopefully see him across the line as well. So uh, Mark said he wants to do the last 20 with him. No. <laughs> he's looking very strong, isn't he? Yeah, yeah he's, he's so do impressive. It, yeah. Solid. Um, it on. Yeah, also tomorrow we're going to be dropping my Ultra Trail Snowdonia video, um, which, well, if you want to watch an emotional 100 kilometers across the Snowdonia mountains, um, then stay tuned. We're actually going to be premiering around 3 o'clock GMT time. That is the plan anyway. So stay tuned and join me. I'll be in on the comments chatting. So if you want to ask me questions as we watch the video together, Feel free. Looking forward to it. Yeah, I am too. Although I'm still a bit bitter that I couldn't actually go. I'm into sad. It. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Also, uh, Steve from uh, his Hawaii Five O. We still got a Five O or Five Two. Five Two. Yeah, Hawaii yeah. Five Two. Uh, he's got another update for us. He has been trucking along and uh, making progress, and he's yeah using that Humango AI training app to help him as he gets ready for a. Uh, Pretty big challenge for a 52-year-old trying to qualify for Hawaii. So let's check his update. So Steve, update time. How's it all going? It's going really well. I mean, this helps. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's nice. Uh, the weather's changed, so you know, it's it's quite refreshing to not be running around in the dark, which is a good thing. But yeah, scarily really close now. Yeah. So you've got um, kind of an intermediate race coming up. So Challenge Wales in a little over two weeks. Yep. And then the big dance, another, how many weeks on is that? Uh, I think it's about eight or nine weeks from yeah. Challenge Wales. So okay. we're about, yeah, sort of two, two and a half months. Yeah, out. yeah. So this, this one coming up, it's a nice middle distance event. Obviously, we're going for it, but it's also a nice opportunity to sort of like yeah. blow the cobwebs out, test everything out, see where you're at. Yeah. Um, are you feeling good for that? Um, I think nat- naturally apprehensive, I would say. I've, I've been here before where I think I'm not good enough. Is the training been okay? Is anything going to creep back up injury-wise? So all the kind of healthy, scary parts are in full flow at the moment. <laughs> and how's um, day-to-day training going then? It's good overall. Like in terms of lead up, I feel, I feel good that I've done all the kind of, the, I've been consistent. Um, on a day-to-day basis, obviously you get the ups and downs, uh, but they, they're few and far between now. I think I struggled more 
in the winter. Yeah. I think just because I was starting and I had a few little niggles that were playing on my mind. But yeah, day to day, it's, it, 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 I mean, I've, I've already said it, but this just makes such a difference, you know, with the weather, you see more people out. That, and, that's and also it ties in nicely with you ramping up the mileage a bit on the bike and the run, yeah. right? So yeah. getting out for those nice weekend rides in the sun. Yeah, is good. waterproof gear is sort of in a box at the moment. Um, <laughs> so I'm happy, happy to keep it there for a while. And are you, uh, are you getting a gauge of your fitness? How are you getting on at the moment? Uh, are you seeing improvements? Yeah, definitely. And, and, and also just, you know, Humango have aligned the update of the app perfectly with my training because not only is the weather out, but they've updated the interface. So yeah, I can see um, my readiness, all those kind of metrics are at the top of the app now, which is really good. Um, it so, is a really clean interface, actually. I yeah. saw the update, it's very yeah. nice. Yeah. It feels more uh, sort of natural with other stuff that I use, so it doesn't feel like I'm trying to use it. It's mm -hmm. just there, which is really helpful. Um, yeah, and, and also the, you know, you're used to seeing what you're meant to be doing in that day. And sometimes that can be quite, you know, at 5 a.m. you wake up and think, oh, I've got a big day ahead. But what's nice is they've just got the readiness and all those metrics first. So you, you get a little motivational kick and then yeah, you say, yeah. oh, yeah, I've still got to do it. I find sometimes those metrics a bit addictive, particularly the fitness, um, providing it is going up, but just kind of tracking it as you train. You're like, yes, another session. My fitness has gone yeah. up a little bit more. No, it definitely is. It's very addictive. Um, but no, overall, I think it's, it's, it's yeah, it's really good. Um, it's simpler and yeah, just sort of easier to use on, on the hop, you know, so if you're on your bike and you just need to check something out, it's much more easy for me anyway. Brilliant. Well, well done and best of luck for a couple of weeks time. We'll be checking in with you after that, see how you're getting on and then in the lead up to the big dance. Nice. All right, now for the race results. And as we said earlier, we have got a lot of race results and some really exciting racing. First off, with the oldest European Ironman, Ironman Lanzarote um, on the women's side, it was Lydia Dan that went from, well, wire to wire, basically, to take the win in 9 hours 59, 12, ahead of Lisbeth Verbeist um, in 10 hours 6, and then Jeanne Colon in 30. Yeah, Lydia Dan defending her title there two years in a row now. Uh, on the men's side, it looked like it was going to be a showdown between Cam and Sam. Uh, the two Uber bikers were going head to head out on the bike. Uh, Cam... Cam, uh, Sam Ledlow obviously leading up the, or being in the front in the swim, as you would expect, and Cam trying to chase that down. He did chase it down and it looked like they were going to have a, a real battle, uh, but Sam Ledlow faulted a little bit towards the end of the bike. Uh, Cam would have actually set a new bike course record there with a 4.37.56 bike split, which is very impressive on that course. Uh, he then got off and said about running, but uh, he was run down by a very impressive Arthur Hosseau, who apparently actually tra trains with Sam Ledlow, their training partners. Uh, so he had a very impressive day, finishing in 8.22.30 and taking the win. Nick Hildorn also ran past Camworth uh, to get second, uh, and Camworth ran in for third. Uh, Sam Ledlow uh, fell by the wayside. He said he ran 21Ks and wobbled 2Ks before being pulled off the course. It was quite interesting watching the um the track of this, because Sam went out very hard at the yeah. start of the bike and actually was putting time into Cam initially. Mm -hmm. And then after sort of the halfway mark, roughly, that just started to slip away and Cam came flying back through. So don't want to say yeah. maybe it's about pacing there. Maybe it was. Although well, in Sam's, Sam's defense, he did say afterwards he's got a lot to learn and he yeah. is still new, new at this and he is learning some hard lessons. It looks like he learned a hard one there. Uh, then 70.3 pay, pay day uh, in France. Uh, we This was touted as the battle of the runners, Emma Pallant Brown versus Tamara Jewett, and it did actually come down to quite a close battle on the run, but mostly because Tamara Jewett, uh, well, gave herself a bit of work to do by not staying on her bike. Yeah, she had a couple of spills, um, twice in fact, um, and did actually go on to say, um, Twice on tricky roads in the relentless rain. How very North American of me. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> Tell us your North American triathlete racing in Europe without telling us you're a North American at triathlete racing in Europe. Uh, yeah. Anyway, she overcame that. And to be, to be uh, fair to her, she put out a very impressive run of a 113.28, but it wasn't enough to catch Emma Pallant Brown, who took the win there uh, in a 4.17.29. Tamara Jewett in second, and Emily Morier. 
from France in third. Yeah, um, on the men's side, it was Dylan Magnian that took the win there with an impressive run split, 107-32. Um, wow. So ran back through the field there ahead of Bart Ernotts in second. In third, we had Brandy Weiss and in fourth, also Matt Troutman. Oh, two South Africans there, yeah, in third and fourth. And then 70.3 crash car. This was Lucy Charles Barkley, uh, who wasn't racing and then was racing. Uh, she flew in there last minute uh, and Iron Man actually moved a few goalposts and, you know, she could skip the pro briefing and stuff so that she could actually go and do this race without a visa uh, and yeah she uh, put on quite a show she had a mechanical on the bike and then overcame that and was actually running faster than anyone got within 24 seconds of uh, Laura Phillip at one point but Laura Phillip held on for the win there a very impressive win it must be said a uh, very rounded well-rounded effort all round swim bike and run from her 4.15.26 to take the win ahead of Lucy Charles Barkley uh, and then Eddie Saltas was in third there uh, rounding up the podium. I mean, I have to say that's obviously a very impressive performance by all the ladies there, but I mean, Lisa Charles Barkley to have flown in very last minute, had mechanical issues and still be contending for the win and so close. I yeah, mean, she said on her post, she was very frustrated because her legs were definitely there and the mechanical cost her and she, she actually for a moment thought, ah, oh, she's going to throw in the towel because of the mechanical, but she... Uh, yeah. Came up and Obviously ran not to it. take away anything from Laura Phillips' um, impressive performance because that yeah. really is. Um, on the men's side, um, we had quite a remarkable result because Rico Bogan took the win ahead of Patrick Langer. Yeah, if you haven't heard that name before, yeah, nor have we. <laughs> no, um, he, we had a little search actually. He's 22, 23 years old roughly. Um, we're not entirely sure exactly of his age, but yeah, he took the win there. That's a massive, massive breakthrough performance and result for him. Ahead of Patrick Langer, about a minute ahead as well. Um, and then in third, we had Andreas Salvesberg, who obviously overcome came those <laughs> yeah. very frustrating mechanicals. mechanicals yeah. yeah, yeah, very, very difficult. And then uh, second up with the Chattanooga, which was a women's only race, and that's all. Uh, Paula Finley absolutely dominate. Uh, she was not in the same time as anyone else. Uh, she took off on the bike and just, uh, yeah, basically made it her own race. Uh, she uh, she was not threatened by anyone, winning by almost six minutes in the end there with a 409.43 ahead of Danielle Lewis in second and Jeannie Metzler from South Africa in third. Yeah, we also had the Challenge Championship in Shamarin um, on the women's side. It was India Lee that took the win there despite riding single gear all day long and I actually posted the fastest bike split of the day um, so she took the win by a couple of minutes ahead of Carolyn Pohl in second and third Sarah Perez Salah if there was a course on the oh, whole trigger <laughs> that you're going to choose to have single speed it would be the Shamarin course because yeah. it is as flat as a as, pancake as she said in her post <laughs> she uh, almost DNS'd um, but decided to roll the dice and it paid off to be honest everyone play. else in that course only changed gears about three times and then, <laughs> and then it might have been a couple of t- turns yeah, she came out exactly. like, Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> back in. No, no one really changes gear many times in that race. Uh, on the men's side, it was Mattis Mar- Margiria uh, from France who took the win ahead of Aaron Royal with Frederick Funk running up the podium on the men's side. Yeah, we also had um, Challenge St. Poulton, um, which is a fantastic race. Um, uh, on the women's side, it was Lottie Wilms that took the win there, ahead of Danielle Kleiser in second and Carolyn Leerider in third. Yeah, and on the men's side, it was Tom Hug in first, Lucas Hollis in second, and Ruben Zapunkt in third. And Sebi Keenly was actually there. This was part of his discontinued tour, and he got another uh, draft in penalty. That's two weeks in a row last week. A uh, very frustrated fourth place for him uh, at Challenge Freus, where he got a penalty and he basically said he didn't deserve it uh, and uh, again he got a penalty and this time by by his own account he threw his toys out the cot and didn't finish he uh, <laughs> he said he absolutely lost it when he got that penalty and just called it a day uh, uh, I mean it is what it is this is the guy who doesn't get penalties and hasn't for many many years and now he's got two in two weeks it's uh, I guess you can see why yeah, that's frustrating his pain there yeah. uh, and finally we had Exterra Oak Mountain um, and actually we had a a fun race here between Arthur Sirius and Eric Lagerstrom. It was Arthur Sirius that took the win, uh, edging ahead on the run. Um, Eric Lagerstrom taking second and Jens Emil Sloth Nilsson taking third. Yeah, on the women's side it was Alizie Patiz from France taking the win ahead of Marta Mendito from Italy and Samantha Kingsford of New Zealand uh, taking third. Ooh. 
Yeah. What a week of racing. Lot of You'll races. be pleased to know there's not quite so much next week. Yeah. Uh, we have Ironman Brazil, we've got WTCS Cagliari, which we will see Gwen Jorgensen getting stuck into. And actually, I mean, I've heard that there's some COVID going around the ranks mm. there, so that could open up some doors a bit. Yeah, it sounds like after Yokohama last week, a few or a few of the athletes have uh, come down with COVID and taken a few out of out of the race. But it means uh, Gwen Jorgensen is in that race and also Katie Zaveris and last week you remember at Yokohama a couple of weeks ago Gwen flew all the way there to hope to race didn't get onto the start Katie Zaveris who was also on the wait list decided not to fly although we went to a world cup instead did get a race in uh, but they're both into this race so they're both trying to get qualified for that Paris and they're both in Cagliari and it's the last long distance uh, well Long distance? Standard distance. <laughs> yeah. Olympic distance. WTCS race. The rest are sprint distances before the Paris Test event all the way in August. So it'll uh, be interesting to see how they go there. Yeah, and then the following week again, we then have Ironman Hamburg, which is the men's European champs. That is going to be a cracker. Yeah. Well, we will yeah. hopefully see Alistair Brownlee, Jan Frodeno and Max Newman, plus many more on that start line. Yeah, that's going to be exciting. All right, now it's time to take a look at your pin board of all the things that you guys have sent us. And we've been asking this month for your open water swim, uh, well, your first open water swim probably for the Northern Hemisphere, perhaps your last one uh, for the Southern Hemisphere, but your epic open water swim venues at least anyway. Uh, and we've got quite a few good sub submissions over the last month. One more week to get those in and then we're going to move it on to something else. So uh, we haven't decided to watch yet, uh, but it's still open water swim season uh, as far as we're concerned. And this one is from Rich with his in Styles Pond, Boxford, Massachusetts. And he says, Styles Pond is such a beautiful venue for an open water swim at 66 degrees. It was quite comfortable in my full sleeve, blue 70 wetsuit. I was jumping for joy to be back in the open water. Oh, look at that. That it does, does look. Big jump for us. Hey, it does look, <laughs> does look nice, that venue, doesn't it? It does, yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> slightly different venue. Uh, James from R River Shannon in Ireland with some nice grey clouds above his head. Uh, <laughs> my first open water event of the year, roll on 2023. Happy to see the hour, hours in the pool have crossed over successfully to the open water this year. Yeah. Well, um, good to see isn't, that, James. Isn't that Irish sunshine? Yeah. I'm sure yeah. that is, yes. <laughs> um, I mean, it's going to be... As close as you're going to get. Pretty cold in there. <laughs> yeah. And we got another one from Kim, uh, and she says, uh, well, gives her option for a bike, and she says it's a swim photo, of course. Uh, Langana Valtzi, the Ironman Frank Frankfurt swim course and she went for a swim their first open order swim of the season 11 degrees outside 16 degrees water temperature oh, it's heating up it's, uh, it's warming up 16 yeah, degrees she's, okay. she's got That's a, a cold freezing face next to it but I tell you our open water venues near us have only just broken into the 14 degrees celsius marks so. yeah and push Mm. Uh, and Felicia from Colorado sent us this one. First open water swim session of 2023. We only swam 500 meters, but the water temp at 57 Fahrenheit, which is 13 degrees Celsius, uh, one lap was plenty. Hopefully it warms up in time for my June 3rd race, which is whoa, two weeks. Nice. <laughs> Fingers crossed for you. <laughs> uh, we also got, well, received some lovely photos from Pedro in Brazil. Unfortunately, they're almost a little too good. I'd maybe say they came from a professional photographer mm. from a race event, which means they aren't aren't yours. Um, so if you are sending in any photos, make sure they are yours, otherwise we can't really share them on the channel, although we would love to. Thanks for so, sending them anyway. Yeah, do, yeah. yeah, thanks for sharing them, and we had a great time looking through them. <laughs> Keep them coming in using that photo uploader. Link on screen right now, you can find it in the description just down below. Okay, now moving on to our new segment of the show, Say What? Say what? <laughs> Thanks, James. Nice. This one comes from um, Pero0076, and this was under last week's Coach's Corner. And this is in reference to training for a full distance or iron distance triathlon. And they disagreed with our view. <laughs> yeah, we said <laughs> that you shouldn't go and try and do your full race distance before race day because the recovery that I'll take has just take too long and it's not worth it. Yeah. Now, to be clear, we very much welcome people's views and comments, um, but I will read out Perro's because we disagree. <laughs> um, he disagreed with us. I disagree with the thing about whether to do a full distance in training or not. I feel that the full distance is a must. There's so much that we that can go wrong. Hydration, nutrition, something breaking on the bike, clothing, eyewear, a helmet. It goes on and on and on. Essentially, he is saying that if you want to do a full distance triathlon, you've got to do it in training. What do we think to that, James? I disagree. I think mm -hmm. most of the things that you that you can isolate, such as your helmet not being comfortable or 
nutrition issues and that kind of thing. You can do in race simulation uh, sessions that are a lot shorter than the actual race day, something that allows you to recover from it and carry on your training for the rest of the week. Essentially a race day effort, a race duration effort, a race simulation effort that takes almost the entire length of time that the race is gonna take is just gonna take you too long to recover from and you're actually gonna lose training time and you're gonna lose fitness rather than gaining fitness. Uh, as much as you might gain some preparation for race day, you're not going to gain your actual performance from race day, if that makes sense. Uh, so yeah, I disagree with him there. I was, as I said in the original video, uh, I don't think it is wise to do the full distance uh, on your of your race before race day. Obviously, the shorter the race comes, the less that's true. Uh, but when you're doing longer distance triathlons, you just have no business doing the full distance before race day. I understand his argument mm -hmm. that you want to test everything, but that's what the race is for, to test yourself and find the limits. Yeah, I mean, if we look at the pro athletes, none of them are out there doing Ironmans week in, week out preparing. Again, even if we strip this back, get away from the triathlon element, just marathon racing, people do not do a full marathon before competing in a marathon. Even the top elite Racers aren't doing marathons week in week out. I can hear that. I can hear the people commenting now, Mark, going, "But what about how they train?" Podcast where they spoke about Christian Blumenfeld's week before Kona. Um, I don't have an answer to yeah. that one. <laughs> he, he's an outlier, and we're not going to talk about. Uh, we have just we're, talked we're, about his uh, <laughs> race schedule earlier on, and how I don't think ninety nine point nine 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 percent of people would even consider that schedule. No. Christian is certainly an outlier. Same with his training, yeah. I don't think you should be doing race distance before race day. And yeah. there you have it. Um, we also, this is just a Brucey bonus. Um, I particularly enjoyed these comments under uh, well, my recent Zone 3 video on the channel. Oh, uh, a lot did. of people <laughs> loving it. So get you, Mark. Thanks for clarifying that Zone 3 misconception. Thanks, Mark. Yeah. Fully uncovered mm. the topic as yeah. usual. Mm. Uh, thanks, GTN. That was one of the best explanations, explanations ever. Very one good, of the Mark. best explanations on Zone 3 training on YouTube to date. Um, uh, God, thanks, guys. Absolutely awesome. Yeah, I, I really knocked out of the park on that, I must say. Yeah, well done, Mark. No, actually, in reality, <laughs> give you a bit of a kind of behind the scenes insight here. We do script all our videos, we write our own videos, and um, sometimes that means that we share those scripts with one another. James presents some of my videos, I present some of James's, just where one of us is available, not the other. And so James, what, saying, yeah, what is... James absolutely knocked it out of the park on that script, and I took all the glory <laughs> and the limelight <laughs> by presenting it. So thank you very much for that, James. Yeah, yeah, you're and welcome, Mark. Thank you yeah, for all the welcome. lovely positive comments. Yeah, <laughs> any, any time, Mark. Any time. Okay, that's it for this week's show. Thank you for watching. Uh, we actually are off to a bit of an adventure this coming weekend. We're doing a swim run adventure and we are making a video oh, of it. Oh, no, no, you got this wrong. It's not an adventure, James. This is a full on versus GTN versus James versus Heather versus Mark. Yeah. Swim yeah. run edition. Yeah. James has not done any swim training. And the water is very cold. It's James just, is very yeah. nervous about this uh, particular challenge. Uh, also coming up on the channel, we have Heather's Xterra video with Anna from GMBM where they take on the pros. Um, you also can, if you haven't already checked out, that Race Ranger investigation behind the scenes video from the PTO European Open over in Ibiza. Yep, thanks for watching. See you again next week. Is it too late to uh, do some swim training now? It's your like, chance to get me back for that zone three, three video. Three days.